name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It's really good to be here. I was away in Florida attending uh, the uh, uh, Episcopal Asian Ministry, Asia America Ministry. Uh, it's our uh, annual, um, annual, they call it a, a consultation, and, and all of us who belong to an ethnic group of uh, Asia attend. And this year there were like 150 of us, but this year the venue changed. We usually hold such things in hotels. This year it was at the Episcopal Retreat Center in Parrish, Florida. It's a big forest with cottages, meeting places all over uh, the, the premise, the, the, the forest. Beautiful scenery, but I couldn't get out to see it because I'm very allergic to insect bites. And I was out for just a walk the first morning. I got bitten here and my eye swelled up. And two days afterwards, I got it down. The other eye got bit. So if you see the photos now from the, you see that I had no eyes. <laughs> I, I told our photographer that he had to Photoshop it because I don't like to look like that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's good to be back, and it was a very um, good experience. We had a good workshop, we had good keynote speakers, a very relevant keynote speaker about um, globalization and our faith and our dementia, our, what, I can't say that word, evangelism. So anyway, I'm glad that I'm back here and especially standing here today. All right, when you heard um, this gospel read to you, what do you have in your mind? What strikes you as the gist of the gospel? To me, when I first, when we first hear the gospel read to us, we think, Oh, it's about two more miracles that happen because of faith. What else can it be? After each miracle, Jesus said something about faith. To the woman with the hemorrhage, Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. And then to Jairus, when, when he heard the news that his daughter already died before Jesus could reach her. What did Jesus say again? Do not fear, only believe. It seems like that's what Jesus says to most of the recipients of the miracles. It's your faith that made the miracles. And reading about all these miracles that Jesus performed in healing, in casting out demons, in feeding the multitudes with their little, I can't help but wish that one would also happen here and now because we do desperately need miracles. Most of us would know someone who could use a miracle at this time, either in healing of, a, of an incurable disease or in taking care of a dire situation that this person is in or whatever. But I, I know of several people that would really need some miracles to take place in their own life. And 
since we understand that our faith makes the miracle happen, so we study the faith pattern of the recipients of the miracles in the Bible. We study their pattern of faith, we study their virtues, we study their lives so we can, we can imitate them. We can follow their examples. Or we can figure out a, a formula so that miracles can also happen for us. I don't know if you remember about 10 years ago in the bookstores, especially in Christian bookstores, you see this book called The Prayer of Jabez. Do you, do you remember that at all? Yeah, it, that's the same reason, the same way of thinking. That's why that book got sold, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of copies. Because the author thought that it was a pattern for a kind of prayer that we can duplicate to produce something good, a miracle. In today's gospel, that day, Jesus is barely back from home, uh, home from a trip into the Gentile territory where he has cast out demons and sent them into the pigs. Jesus meets a synagogue ruler named Jairus, who because of his daughter's illness, he begged Jesus in public to come heal his, healing, his dying daughter. And Jesus took the disciples with him and followed Jairus home. And a crowd of curious bystanders followed them because it's not a common thing. It, it, as a matter of fact, it was most uncommon if not scandalous that a synagogue leader would publicly sought the help from Jesus, whose radical ways were criticized by the organized religion community at the time. And this is one of the, the, the narrative that, that is different from any other narrative, is that on the way to do one miracle, another one, is sandwiched in between. On the way, another woman had been suffering from this hemorrhage problem for 12 years and, was, and she was fighting her way through the crowd and touched Jesus' robe. And she was cured the moment she touched the hem of his garment. And again, this is about faith. Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. <clears throat> and as he was not even finished saying this, the news came that, that Jairus' daughter was already dead. Jesus was too late. But Jesus advised to the, the father, so don't be afraid. Don't have fear, just believe. So this belief, this, this command, this about belief makes us think of our faith again. When I was serving another parish, a parishioner was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Her faith was strong. She had prayed for healing for many people before that in the congregation, and many were healed. So although sick and weakened by chemo 